My name is Abdul Rahman Razik. Assalamu alaikum. My question is how to pray a salah with full concentration and thinking about Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran in Surah Al-Mu'minun, chapter number 23, verse number 1 and 2, Qad aflah al-mu'minun. Verily the believers, they are successful. Alladheena hum fi salatim khashi'oon. Those who they are in their prayer, humbly submissive. So you need to have khushu in your prayer. And it is common that our mind wanders during the prayer. Many people, their mind wanders during the prayer. If you are a businessman, you will think about your business, how much profit you've made during the prayer. If you are a student, you'll think about your studies. If you have appeared for an examination, you will start reviewing the examination paper during the Salah. For question two, I should have written so and so answer. Question three, I made a mistake in the answer. So it is common that our mind wanders during the prayer. How do we prevent our mind from wandering during the prayer? The first thing that we need to do is to focus on the meaning of what we are reciting. If you know Arabic as a language, this is the best. If you do not know Arabic as a language, then we should recollect the meaning. We need to memorize the meaning of what we are reciting. For example, when we recite Surah Fatiha, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. In our mind, we should recollect the meaning. All praise to Allah, the Lord of the worlds, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, the most gracious, the most merciful. We should recollect the meaning. But after a few days, after a few weeks, even this will become mechanical. So after recollecting the meaning, we should ponder upon the meaning of what we are reciting. And if we do so, inshallah, our mind will not wander. And I would like to share with you an incident. Once the people, they were offering salah and the Imam and the Muqtadi, the people who were following the Imam, after they completed their prayer, they were confused. Did we offer two rakah or did we offer three rakah in the Maghrib prayer? So one person, he says that I am sure that we have offered only two rakah in the Maghrib prayer. So the people, they ask him, how do you know? How can you be so sure? How can you be 100% sure? So he says, I am 100% sure that we have offered two raka instead of offering three raka in the Maghrib prayer. Because whenever I offer the Maghrib prayer, in each raka, I do calculation of the profit that I have made in my shop. I have three shops. In each raka, I do calculation of one shop. So in three raka, I do calculation of three shops. But in this salah, I did calculation only of two shops. I did not do calculation of three shops. So that is the reason I am sure that we have offered only two rakah. So it is common that people, their mind wanders during the prayer. And the reason our mind wanders is because our mind is not occupied. An empty mind is a devil's workshop. Adam al-Qayyum al-Jawzi rahimahullah, he mentions in his book Al-Fawaid, on page number 200 that every individual stands in front of his Lord on two different occasions the first is while he's offering Salah and the second is on the day of judgment when he meets his Lord Ibn al-Qayyum rahimahullah he said these two different occasions that an individual a believer stands in front of his Lord but if you do not offer Salah correctly then your accountability on the day of judgment it will not go with ease now let's discuss a few ways in which we can attain khushu and concentration in our prayer the first is bearing in mind who you're standing in front of knowing the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knowing how great Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is if you know how great Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Inshallah, you will have khushu and concentration in your prayer. The second is knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is keeping an eye on you and He is watching you. The third is 
offering your salah with the intention of gaining complete reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fourth, and as I mentioned earlier, it is a very important point that recollecting and concentrating upon the meaning of what you are reciting. You should concentrate on the verse of the glorious Quran and also you should concentrate on the adhkar that you say during the prayer. So this is very important. Besides this, you should also see to it that your mind does not wander during the prayer. You should also see to it that there are no objects around you that could distract you. For example, images, people making some noises, there may be music, people causing disturbance. When you offer salah, you should pray in such a place where there is no disturbance. And I would like to share with you a small personal tip. Concentrate and focus only about the salah and make your mind set in such a way that you are going to face your Lord and then start your prayer. Inshallah, you will have khushu and concentration in your prayer. And our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said that Allah turns towards a slave as long as he does not look around in his prayer. So do not look around in your prayer. So we should not look around in our prayer. And we should also remember death. We should offer our salah as though it is our last prayer. And if we offer our salah in this way, inshallah, we'll offer it correctly with khushu in Surah An Kabut, chapter number 29, verse number 45. For verily prayer prevents from shameful and unjust deeds. Salah prayer prevents from shameful and unjust deeds. If we offer our salah correctly with khushu, with concentration, we will have a righteous life and salah will prevent us from shameful and immodest deeds. The first thing among the deeds that will be questioned to us on the day of judgment, it is our prayer. If it is done correctly, the remaining deeds it will follow. So we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may he accept all our salah, all our prayer and may he help us to get ultimate khushu and concentration during our prayer.